So, oh, no. in theory, last night's Warriors Rockets game was supposed to give us some clarity about the West. Mm -hmm. You know, as in, is Golden State just still the overwhelming favorite, yes. or is Houston an actual threat? No. That kind of clarity. Unfortunately, we didn't get an answer to anything of that nature, not with both James Harden and Kevin Durant sitting out. But what's great about the NBA is that sometimes, as we're all obsessing about these league-wide, big, long-term <laughs> questions, what we get instead is something small and different and altogether wonderful. Deontay Weber. Sometimes we get <laughs> Gerald Green. You know Green. He was one of the last players to enter the NBA straight out of high school, and to be honest, one of the better examples probably of why they changed the rule. He was clearly talented. I mean, the man won the 2007 slam dunk competition by jumping over a table. He was the runner up the year after that. Remember the cupcake birthday candle dunk? Should have won. <laughs> right? Should have won. It was a fan vote that year. That was a mistake. Anyway, he was also a little bit immature. And when Boston traded him to Minnesota in the Kevin Garnett deal, it started a long stretch where he couldn't really find his role and didn't really develop. He bounced from the Wolves to the Rockets uh. to the Mavericks then over to Russia, then China, then the D-League, then the Nets, then the Pacers, then the Man, Suns, that's a lot of teams. where it looked like he might finally settle, but nope, he'd have stints with the Heat and the Celtics again before getting cut by Milwaukee in training camp this fall. That went full happy days with that. And then nothing. Seemed like Gerald Green was done playing pro ball. I mean, he told our Tim McMahon that for the past two and a half months, his only hooping has been playing pickup in his driveway with his Rottweiler. And he might have stayed there in that driveway if the Rockets hadn't had so many injuries this month or if Daryl Morey hadn't been part of that Boston front office that initially drafted him all those years ago or if he didn't have an off-court friendship with James Harden, who vouched for him this time. But all of that happened. And that is how Green ended up on that court last night, dropping 29 points just one night after scoring 27 against Orlando. Green was more lethal from three last night than Steph Curry. And by the end of the game, he's basically getting triple teamed here. <laughs> Mike D'Antoni's system is just the perfect fit for Green. And now Woj is reporting Houston will guarantee his $1.4 million contract for the rest of the season. And of course, this isn't going to be franchise altering for the Rockets. When the big games come in April and May, no one expects Green to be the deciding factor. But for one night, Last night, it wasn't about that. It was about a great comeback story, and it was delightful. Stack, you are someone who has had different roles on different teams. Why do you think it is clicking here this time, finally, for Gerald Green? Well, it, it shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. This is what he's done. He's a scorer. This has been his role on every team he's been on. Uh, I think, you know, people probably overlook some things because maybe he's not aggressive on defense, or maybe they expect more out of him on defense since he's so athletic. <laughs> But he's a scorer. He's been a scorer his whole career. Every team he's been on, he's been a scorer. He's one of those guys that stay ready. So I'm, I'm not surprised that he's having this success. I think he's definitely going to help this team going down in the playoffs. See, I didn't see anything last night that was like, oh, Joe Green could do that? He's been doing He's been doing that at all those stops. And by the way. But it wasn't two, enough to make him stick in the other There's two ways to look at it. He, he didn't do enough to stick, or maybe he's doing enough to get another chance and another chance and another chance. And that's what this league is about. If you have talent. It takes a lot for teams to be like, I don't want any parts of that talent. Right. So that right there, some might look at it like, ooh, you're not good enough to stick. If I'm him, I feel good. Look at how many teams oh, still want me and right. still interested in me. Right. As far as playing here in Houston, obviously, look, Mike D'Antoni has a long history of guys who are guys who have no conscience, right? Mm -hmm. Quentin Richardson was a guy like that. <laughs> Eddie House was a guy like that. You look at all the different teams Mike D'Antoni coached, he's had this kind of guy who can give you 26 on any given night like that. So. I don't see, I don't, it's not a big deal to me because this is who he is. Like, and he's so. home. And he's home. And he's, That's home. Right. he's, he's home got there. some energy. I was texting with Daryl Morey last night and kind of being like, well, what's working now? And he said, you got to give him credit. It seems like he is being more aggressive, as you say, Stack. Mm -hmm. On defense, that effort is there. Maybe after he's had, 10, by the way, 12 stops, you're saying, I better do, I've been in my driveway with my Rottweiler. I better try on defense. There's right. that. And there's also, if you look at all those stops, his first Couple of months always looks really good. Right. And right. then after a while, it's you start to the the. It's January. Up. They they just need a few months from there. There you go. Good.